Hi, good morning. It's Gene from Mavstar Observatory. Guys, really pleased that you all enjoyed the last uh, two videos that we did on that topic. And I just want to quickly round up uh, a few points that I didn't make in that video. Uh, trust me, you could keep going on and on and on. In total, that's about 25 years worth of uh, research. Um, not full time, but you know, I have invested a lot of obviously hours into this, and uh, you know, that was the results of what I found. Um, sometimes you can feel like you're absolutely right and on the ball, and other times when you look at some of this stuff, you think, um, well, maybe you know, there could be other explanations. But I think you know, if we overlook uh, the synchronicity of things all the time, then I'm sure we're missing something. Um, we're looking at these interstellar gas uh, photos of you know galaxies and other parts of our universe, and you know there's nothing wicked taking place uh, with the creation of stars, uh, supernovas. There's nothing wicked about that. It's just the nature of the universe in which we live in. Where the wickedness starts, if you ask me, is down on a planet like Earth, and I believe that there are probably millions of other planets with intelligent life on there maybe we just haven't discovered them yet or they've not introduced themselves to us i do believe we have been visited on this planet by them and you know if we look into the bible it does certainly talk about et's descending from the heavens if you look at what it says in ezekiel you'll see him describing this object with that that looks like wheels within wheels and they're obviously they're wearing helmets because on one side of the helmet it's a ball the face of a, a human and then there's other sides of this helmet with different um you know uh, designs to it so again you know there are mentions of ufos in the bible going back thousands of years in our history um, in fact the Sumerians believed that the Amanarchy were on our planet and that they themselves had descended from the heavens um, you know in Revelations it talks about the object described as the bride descending from the heavens you know these are in um, you know what we would describe today as UFOs and alien beings and you know I've seen some documentary research on uh, an island during the Second World War when the Americans landed on this island uh, there was just the indigenous native people on the island and because they saw the Americans bringing bulldozers arriving on big iron ships they had aircraft that built a runway they believed that there was gods and you know we would probably do that if more advanced intelligent life forms come to our earth and especially if we was very primitive at that point in time we would believe probably even more so that there was gods but the point is this you know it's not our universe that's wicked and evil it's when intelligent beings that are still in my view um, adult children and don't know how to deal with their intelligence that's where the wickedness starts and you haven't got to look far on this planet to see you can see that most of the other diverse species are not wicked at all you know a lion is going to hunt a gazelle because it's perfectly natural for it to do that there isn't shops that lions use to get the meat they have to kill another animal but that is nature it's the same as what's going on in our universe um, you know when stars explode um, you know they create interstellar gas over a long period of time you know little objects build up gravity which attract more of this interstellar gas and next minute you have a star forming once again i've said this many of times you know you can look at everything in the universe as a box of lego and you know you can take the parts out of the box and build whatever you want with them but inevitably they're going to go back in that box and that's another uh, another way of describing this is is that the universe is the biggest um, recycling plant we could ever imagine it wastes absolutely nothing and it, it does create and it creates over trillions of years and there is you know what appears to be destruction you know when stars burn up all their fuel or however you want to think they work but they do as we know supernovae at, you know a point in time and as a result of that you know whatever stars uh, whatever planets around that star system um, you know fall 
uh, to you know the the occurrence of what happens during a supernova and it's not what we would class as a nice thing if it was going to happen to our sun if it was about to supernovae we would look at it as a dreadful thing but in reality it is just nature going about its work you know we are even though you know we have got a certain level of technology i think sometimes we i describe it as adult children still we we don't quite know how to use a lot of the technology we've got and just for instance um you know we didn't build the first nuclear reactor when we discovered how powerful uh, plutonium and uranium was in fact the first thing we built with it was an atomic bomb and that just puts it clearly in perspective you know it's like giving a child a box of matches uh, with its unawareness of how dangerous they are and it's only going to be a matter of time before they burn their fingers you know when they detonated the first atomic bomb they wasn't sure whether it was going to ignite uh, the whole of the atmosphere of the earth can you believe it and yet they did it it just surprises me uh, the logic of even what we call our best scientists on this planet that they would even take such a risk without first of all you know knowing that you know if they was to do such an experiment it wouldn't be so de destructive but you know this is the world we live in and like i say it, it's us that do the wicked acts and you know we we do stink up our uh, solar system with our behavior some of us do at least and you know it is getting out of control and as a result of that nothing good will come and if that's what revelations is describing in the bible well it's obvious that this behavior has been witnessed before and it's led to you know a catastrophe you know noah's floods and sodom and gomorrah and as someone correctly pointed out that was just one city the whole of this earth at the moment has a stinky attitude and you know uh, there is so much corruption and uh, wickedness that you know it's only like i say a matter of time before you know what is described in the bible or what people are predicting will come true and you know we ain't far away from that if you ask me guys if we look at probably the way nature is responding to our behavior and you know people are going to think what you mean nature can respond to our behavior well guys sometimes people forget that we are a part of nature sometimes people completely forget that we are just a species on this planet amongst a billion other species the only thing that separates ourselves from all the other species is the fact that we have the um, mental capacity to act in a certain way and as a result of that mental capacity and intelligence we have become top of the food chain and you know we control everything on this planet but we do owe it to every other species on this planet to be good stewards i think you would agree with me on that um there was a lot of good comments on the last two videos and i'd like to do a lot more videos on the you know on those subjects but you know we are an observatory and you know we've got equipment that we have to monitor and one of the uh, bits of equipment that we monitor are the magnetometers that are in the field around the world now and we've had some data come from the gold coast and again it's showing a, a decline in the uh, micro tesla so something is definitely going on now in that region of our earth so we have had a decline first of all in perth australia and then on the other side of the coast in on the gold coast we've had a decline of uh, micro teslas there we've also had a constant steady decline in hong kong so we had definitely got something going on and something's picking up over there and you know we're going to keep monitoring it we've got a busy month this month here at the observatory because we've got to build three magnetometers uh, we're going to be putting another magnetometer in uh uh, Tuscan, Arizona, I believe it is. Uh, Scott's going to look after one of those for us. And then at a later date, he's also going to look after a muon detector there as well. Um, we're going to try and get uh, our magnetometer relocated. That's in California at the moment because the data just isn't coming uh, back for us from that region. And I've got to have a word with Brad uh, to see if he's got a data drop for us so that we can add it to Kentucky's data. So, you know, we've got things changing, guys. Um, now there was one comment uh, that you know I think was a bit unfair because you know it says why do you keep mentioning um, you know 
your link for you know donations well simply it's because of this is a publicly funded observatory and we've had the funds that we've raised uh, from you know a few like-minded people and it's a very small amount considering we've nearly got 30,000 subscribers on air it is a very small amount if there was more money being generated first of all I wouldn't have to mention it but you know I've noticed that if the mention of the link is not done we don't get no support it's as simple as that so you know it's a publicly funded observatory I certainly don't have uh, endless amounts of cash if I did I wouldn't mention the link at all I'd just pay for everything myself because you know I'm interested as probably as much as everybody else in getting the information right now on these important anomalies that we observe here at the observatory so you know I think you're being a bit unfair and I've said this before who goes to work for the boss for nothing these days no one so to say something like that is a bit hypocritical. I could have put the data, uh, which I shared with you guys, in a book and sold the book, or just mentioned the link for you to go and buy the book, but I didn't do that. You know, I'd rather share the information and just leave it down to a few people. If they want to chip in, that's in entirely up to them. If they don't, then things just take a little bit longer at the observatory to get there. And, you know, there's a lot of expense um, in just what we're doing this month. We're trying to get our muon detectors magnetometers and um, CO2 meters out to Brazil and um, safe Australia central and in you know in order to do that I'm sorry I just can't go to the suppliers and say can I have it for nothing as it's like everybody else we can't go to the shops when we need food and ask for it for nothing uh, unfortunately you know the observatory has, has grown over the last few years and um, we do a lot more than just talk on these things. We've actually got a TriMag, a magnetosphere sensor, and in the field we've got magnetometers. And this year we're going to be putting muon detectors uh, in the field as well. And it can't be done for nothing, guys. We're using state-of-the-art equipment and we need funding. It's as simple as that. So, you know, be a little bit more um, understanding. You know, I do have to mention the link because if I don't, as I've seen, nobody helps. So, you know, I have to mention the link. But I just want to say a big thank you, a huge thank you to those people that have helped us in the past and just hope that they continue to help us in the future. You know, um, I'm prepared to put the work in, the hours in, especially this month. It's going to be quite a bit of work going ahead. I've got a program, three magnetometers and build them first, uh, build uh, the muon detectors. And, you know, there's like 60 components on them. Uh, we're still on back order for the photo uh, uh, you know, the photo multipliers uh, but I'm still going to press ahead and build the rest of the muon detector in any case so you know we've got a lot of work to do uh, and you know my deadline is the end of this month to hopefully have the people lined up to get them in the field for early February uh, for, yeah early February so you know we've got a lot going on so let's have a quick look at the data then that came in from the Gold Coast and we'll round the video off there guys so big thanks to Richard for sending the data. We have had a couple of technical problems with the amount of data that was sent this month, but nevertheless, we still had 73 hits where it collected data and it's consistent um, all along. As you can see, it's around uh, 76.5 and goes up to 77 and probably 77.5 uh, microteslas. But the point is, is that it dropped from last month's readings. When it left off, it was still at around 78. And then the month before that, uh, as you can see, it was around 81, 80. So we are getting, uh, you know, a gradual decline like we're seeing over in Hong Kong uh, with what's taking place in that region on the Gold Coast. So something's going on. Uh, you know, I think to see, uh, you know, four or five microtesla drop in you know a matter of months is you know alarming i've got to admit that you know we haven't seen this sort of thing happening uh, before so we're seeing quite a considerable amount of uh, you know magnetosphere strength dropping that region and to put that in perspective it's over seven percent of the magnetosphere that's decayed in just a few months could it mean that we are getting close to the 40 degree mark where things are going to start going into the weak field lines and at that point rapidly move we just got to wait and see guys but things are definitely moving i wanted to just um uh before i end this just bring your attention to something uh important 
So we're looking on null skull at CO2 concentrations and um, you can see where the source of this information is coming from, it's NASA. Uh, but, you know, I've got to say, uh, they're not far off from what they're saying we should be having with regards to parts per million. Today I uh, put the uh, CO2 meter outside for a good 15 minutes and my reading was 422 at the Mavstar Observatory and NASA's was 428 so you know I'll give them that little bit there and say you know it's probably accurate this on this day that what they're saying is we're getting CO2 um, is the case. One thing I noticed is that the majority of the northern hemisphere is really where the concentration of CO2 is. If you look at the scale of there you can see uh, where the highest concentrations are but we'll just have a look at comparing that with the southern hemisphere you can see that most of the CO2 is over the northern hemisphere well it would stand to reason uh, that there's more uh, inhabitants on this planet over that side than there is over the southern hemisphere but I am uh, just surprised to see that uh, when it gets to the equatorial region the CO2 just drops off I'm, I'm not sure whether that's because NASA don't have any monitoring in that region or why that is the case I just uh, find it strange in the, even in the weakest parts you know they're saying that you know like there the darker areas are where there's less CO2 you can see 407 parts but I haven't found anywhere uh, playing about with this today and the other day where I can find a region where there's less than 400 parts per million. But as you guys know, uh, about a week ago, I put the CO2 meter outside and took a reading and got 381 parts per million, yet NASA didn't record it at that. So it does move, um, it changes on a daily basis and it looks like the jet streams are what are moving the CO2 around and we can see that the CO2 um, has cleared a little bit in central England and moved now over to Europe somewhere but uh, it just seemed to be pushed around a lot by the jet streams but I just wondered why that wasn't the case for the southern hemisphere. Now over Australia we'd expect to see a higher count of CO2 uh, in the regions of where the fires are and that's exactly what we're getting and that is up at 431 parts per million right now so yeah but uh, in general most of the CO2 is over the northern hemisphere but then you know most of the continents are equally over the northern hemisphere as well but we do have oceans in the southern hemisphere and we know that they do emit CO2 so I'm just wondering why you know, it is more concentrated to the northern hemisphere and nowhere else. Is that accurate? The only way we would find out is by putting um, our CO2 uh, sensors in Brazil. Uh, and that is exactly what we intend to do, uh, hopefully, at the end of this month or the beginning of the next month. And also, uh, with a CO2 sensor, a uh, muon detector uh, in the south coast of Australia as well. So I'll round up the video guys, I'll just tell you what the muons counts are uh, for today. So we're at uh, 493 uh, muons per hour, per square meter per hour, uh, which is slightly less again than what we had a week ago. I think it was up around about 510 off the top of my head per, per square meter per hour. So it's dropped a little bit, um, but um, you know, I think it's still interesting that uh, we have some uh, strange anomalies taking place right now with the decaying um, magnetic field strength over you know Australia and Hong Kong so it's in that region where the decaying is taking place now is it to do with the South Atlantic anomaly expanding in that region we we'll just have to wait and see and maybe uh, put some more magnetometers out in the field within those vicinities because it's almost like we're blind and the only um, only visuals we're getting back is off our magnetometers because it's very hard to get data from other organizations with regards to this and uh, you know as a result we've we've got to work with what we collect um, and that's that's it at the end of the day but at least we have something and nothing guys so I wish you the best of uh, you know the day today have a great one uh, there's a link down there if you want to help support the observatory um, you know we can't do it on our own 
and the link is the only way we can afford to you know keep buying things and keep building things here so if you want to help do that you know become one of our supporters the links are there i just want to say thank you to all you guys out there that are supporting us in any case on patreon and paypal and uh, just if i can encourage a few more to come forward okay guys have a great day that's how i usually do bye for now